welcome to another edition of Inking with Jim. Today, I'm going to show how I ink these happy trees. Here's another sneak peek at the project uh, that I'm currently inking titled uh, Crimson Outfit, Misfits of the Galaxy. And the brush that I'm using to ink these trees, very happy trees, is a Raphael 8404 and it is a size 2. It is a Kalinske Sable. And I find that a brush is the best way to ink trees um, and to ink uh, grass, blades. Um, you know, it gives you a very organic look. It's, it's very soft, um, very flexible. Uh, and soft, I mean, the, you know, the, the way the Kalinske Sable, the way they bend. Um, and it, it gives me a wide variety of different little um, brush effects that look like individual leaves. So what I'm doing here with this brush is I'm, I'm just actually angling my brush just a little bit um, and I am just placing lines downward and uh, getting this uh, really quick um, sort of a tick line which, which basically is sort of the, the roundness shape of a tick but it comes to a very uh, fine point on the, on the tip. So it, it gives the, the illusion um, of, of a leaf um, and so by placing a lot of them together uh, you, you, you get that that look of a, of a tree in a silhouette and um, I, I don't completely go to complete black um, I do leave a little bit of white in there because um, trees you know they they they're not completely filled with leaves I mean there 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 are gaps in between the the leaves and, and the light behind it um, with the tree being in silhouette you would see through some of the the gaps in the areas um, and down at the bottom I, I there's also some bushes and here you can get the look of the the silhouette that I that I did um, it originally wasn't really in a silhouette but I, I thought it, it helped push the image uh, forward and and this is where um, is a second tree and this tree is, is in a double page um, double page splash <laughs> double page spread I think is the word I'm trying to find here um, so when you see here the the little areas that I'm, I'm painting are inking further away those are little leaves that are blowing off the tree uh, because this tree is up high up on top of a building so um, on an elevated building it's in a it's in a pot somewhere um, so I imagine that the wind would be blowing so I just added little leaves coming off of it um, and you can see where the penciler in this case is Andre Lunatic um, he penciled in a lot of black near the bottom of the tree where uh, he defines his light source as underneath is their shadow and on top is is the light so that his light is coming from the top right corner in that panel um, for that tree so I didn't shade it in completely black I did what I mentioned earlier is to leave a little bit of white gap in there um, and that helps break up the a simple solid silhouette um, so that it doesn't look so much like a an icon um, it, it'll look more like um, it has depth you can see the individual trees by leaving the white space in between um, and so I just did a lot of the same motion um, and and just kind of had fun with it um, you know painting these uh, these happy trees I'm just gonna paint a lot of happy trees <laughs> that's a Bob Ross reference I best Bob Ross I could do I'm sorry but <laughs> I just had to I <laughs> trees you know so you know tree, inking trees you know it can be fun it and, and you have to have fun when you're working on these pages because it is so labor intense to provide a single page of artwork that most likely your reader is going to flip through in about 15 seconds. You know, it's not going to take them very long to read the, the few panels and word balloons. But, but even so, I, I enjoy putting the little details and the extra little thoughts in there of the, the leaves blowing in the wind. Um, and in here, I start to make the leaves just a little further away from each other and they get smaller just to kind of create almost a, a, a gradient effect 
um, and that, you know, some of the areas I, I did little thicker lines and I brought them in closer together and that's where the, the, the tree gets much more dense with leaves and there's less light. Um, and then as it's nearing the light, I made the, the little white, um, I mean the little black lines, you know, where the, it would be the leaf, I made them smaller. Um, and that's just, you know, as the light's hidden it, it, it wouldn't be so much in, in black. Um, and so I just kept doing that, just, just the same motion over and over with my brush. Um, my final brush is, is, like I mentioned, the best tool to use. It gives me a nice wide variety of lines. Um, and this is really just getting familiar with your tools, learning how to manipulate your tools, uh, learning control with it. You know, playing around with your with your brush and learning how you can get a certain type of line, um, what amount of pressure, what type of hand motion uh, would give you that type of, of line work, and and that's just you know, just using your brush more and more, um, and so uh, this is why I, I use brush to uh, approach these these leaves, and um, the the project here is going to be in color. Um, so, uh, I didn't need to paint in all the, or ink in all the leaves in there, especially I didn't want to deviate too much or change up too much from what Andre, the penciler, had, um, placed down there for me. Um, and so, uh, I follow his, his line work, his, his pencils, but, um, I add in a few things. I, I try to help enhance with textures. Um, breaking up some of the black, um, you know, things like that. So I, I feel that an inker is, it, we're an embellisher. I mean, we're the last line of, I mean, not defense, but we're the last line right before, or the last, you know, right before the line art gets finished. So, you know, it's it's up to us to, as an inker, and the last person to touch the, the line work, to help enhance it, to help make sure that it's the best artwork that uh, can be produced at the time uh, before it, it goes to to the shelves or to be printed. And so, uh, you know, all these extra little thoughts that, that, that go through my head and, and it's, a lot of it is just my brain pulling information from life. Um, you know, paying attention when I'm out, when I'm outdoors. Sometimes, uh, I mean, if you're waiting for your, your girlfriend, your wife or your mom or whoever and you're outside and you know, you're waiting for somebody to, to come out you know, out, and you're out in the front yard or something, or you're walking the dog, or whenever you're outside in nature is what I'm trying to say, no matter what you're doing, pay attention to where you're at, to your surroundings, pay attention to the grass blades, pay attention to the tree, the way the texture on the bark, um, touch the tree, the way it feels, the more information you can provide your brain, um, you know, the, the better that it is to, to aid your imagination and that information, your, your mind will pull from that information and will then use it in your artwork. Um, pay attention to the way the light shines through the leaves. Um, pay attention to the leaves on the ground. I mean, you know, everything around you. And I, I, I've, I've had a conversation before with, with a good friend of mine. And um, I, I remember she had mentioned something to me because I, we, were, we were both observing something. We were watching some people, I think. And uh, we had a conversation about them. One of the things she mentioned to me about the way we observe the same scene, but she said that I'm very observant and I pay attention to detail. And I thought, wow, that was, you know, she was right. My brain as an artist work, works different than someone who's not an artist. You know, the way I paid attention to details to the way things were shaped, but just the way I, I had trained my eye to observe and view things. And that was something that I, I started doing early on when, when I was uh, in my early 20s. I, I started up making you know myself observe people because comic books, 90% of what you draw is people. So I started to observe clothing, fabric, folds, environments, trees, automobiles, everything, just started viewing, I, you know, I, I learned to draw from life. Um, I learned how to draw in comic book style from comics, but I learned to draw from life. Um, 
And so that's helped me out a lot. And I, I've been able to bring that into inking. And, um, and, and as I ink more and more, I mean, I learn more and more. Uh, I, I get better. I get more control of, of my tools. And, and especially by inking um, the wide variety of, of artists. Because, uh, you know, inking over top artists from my portfolio, even though I haven't worked with them, but just inking directly over their work has helped me tremendously with rendering shapes, how to bring things forward, uh, how to separate things from the background. And it's helped me out so much that now I'm able to, now that I'm working with a young artist who's, who's new, this guy uh, has a lot of talent. He, he, I believe he's going to be a, a star and this, this guy's got a lot of talent, but he's still, his talent's raw right now. And, and so as an, I find myself as an inker working over him, that it's not tracing at all. It's it's uh, keeping me on my toes because there are things that I need to change up to help his artwork. There are areas where he's still developing, and um, and so I'm able to come in and, and and help, which is great for me because it it trains my eye, it trains me as an inker, and it's making me a stronger inker. So I'm I'm very grateful and thankful to having been able the, the opportunity to work with with Andre. Um, because I mean, he, he is very talented, but, but it, it is still, I mean, he's still got a lot of room to grow, which is great. I mean, it's still, you know, pretty much raw talent. Um, and, uh, so it, I, I, you know, I, I can't complain and I'm, I'm not trying at all to, to say, you know, that, that Andre's work isn't, isn't strong and that it is very strong artwork, but that, um, it has helped enhance my abilities, um, as an, as an inker. Um, by having to help separate some of his rendering and shadows and black and textures and uh, you know helping with uh, keep an eye and helping with different little proportions and things like that um, and, and again uh, project title is called uh, Crimson Outfit and uh, it's called subtitle is uh, Misfits, Misfits of the Galaxy and um, it is penciled by Andre Lunatic and uh, the, the writer uh, on this project, um, if you go to the Facebook page that I, I have provided in the, in the description, um, it, it, the writer is in there, the, the colorist, um, I want to say his name was Richard Bowen, uh, but uh, I, I only have just met him uh, through Facebook um, and uh, briefly uh, had a quick conversation with him. Um, haven't had a chance to meet the writer yet, and as an inker, I mean, I, I don't get the script, um, so I, I all I know about the story is based on the pictures and the storytelling that, that has been provided by the, the penciler. So I, I don't have all the, you know, the insight to the story and everything, but I've got to say, looking at the pages that I've received so far, it looks very interesting. Um, even if I wasn't working on this project, it, it's a project I, I would, uh, a comic I would pick up off the shelf and I, I would read myself. Um, it, it would interest me. Um, and uh, the, you know the characters and the, and the artwork alone, I, I think, are very interesting. Um, and again, I mean, they have a Facebook page; it's still being developed. Um, this is issue number two. Issue one and two are already penciled. Um, issue number one is inked by um, a different set, a different art team. I believe there were two inkers on the first one. This is issue number two, and it's uh, this is the one that that uh, I've, I've get to put my hands on and and uh, getting a, a chance to help out on, on this issue. And uh, so I'm very excited about it. Um, I, I know they have a publisher. Um, I'm not sure if I can announce who the publisher is just yet, but I know if any announcements for the project will be placed on, on their Facebook page. Um, and I'm not sure if there's any other social media and things uh, that they have. I, I know that they're, I'm sure that there is. But I know that their updates are placed on Facebook. So if you're interested in the project and you want to go there uh, to the Facebook, it's in the description down below. If you're interested in my portfolio, um, my portfolio can be seen at um, DeviantArt. And it's basically just my name, jimmyreyes.deviantart.com. And on my DeviantArt page, I have um, my samples of my inks, samples of my pencil work. I'm also a penciler. I've got a preview of my own creator-owned project, which I have two creator-owned projects, but I, I don't have a writer for those projects yet, and I'm uh, plotting out the um, story ideas, and I'm uh, developing characters, and 
pretty much uh, have a good strong plot for my creative projects and um, pretty much all my character sketches are, are near completion they're almost all finished so I'm going to be searching for writers for, for both of them or a writer who wants to team on, on both of them for me it's something that I you know I would like to do um, you know it's it's on my bucket list um, so I, I get a chance to work with a creator who's putting this project his project together you know he put together the art team and his name is uh, Alex and I want to say it's uh, Drog Drogovic I, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last his last name it's pretty tough uh, last name but I'll put it up on the screen so you, you guys can can figure it out or get Google pronounced um, <laughs> to pronounce it for you but uh, he's uh, Alex put together the team he's created this concept and uh, he gets to see his creator own project you know come to life and, and that's something that I, I want to do as well um, so it's it's uh, it's been a pleasure working with them um, and uh, I'm, I'm excited about uh, you know uh, seeing the project get to the next level which will then be colors like I'm excited with uh, Alex has been great he's he's um, sent me some of the color samples and stuff that that the colorist is doing and it's it's neat to see the the development of, of the project get to see the next step because um, as an inker like I mentioned we don't get to see the script but what's been great so far is a few of the pages that I've I've worked on so far Alex has sent me the the colored pages that have been lettered so I've been able to read some of the of the pages and uh, so far I mean I'm like wow this is this is really neat uh, I don't I don't know the name of the writer um, I don't I don't know who he is but it, uh, he, so far I mean I, I really like the words he is uh, placed on the, on the pages it's it's uh, it, it already has my interest and that's how I mentioned even if I wasn't working on it um, you know, it's something that I, I would go pick up. But again, this, um, back to the happy trees here, the, um, the best tool that I find to use, like a, uh, that I've mentioned, um, is the, the brush. Um, and, and size is up to you. Um, as long as it's a Kalinsky Sable, it'll handle the indie ink very well. Uh, some people use uh, the number four round. Some people use the miniature brush. Uh, a miniature is just the sables, on, which are the hair on the end of the brush, are shorter, so there's less of what's called we call a snap, um, less of a bend, and uh, it, it's called a snap because the the bristles then snap back into shape after you've applied pressure, and they they snap right back, and are they bend? But um, so different people have different terms for it. And uh, here in the video, you see me doing some little touch-ups with the nib because the nib gives me sharper, edgier lines. So I ink the bark of the tree with the sharp edge lines. I just started using the Raphael 8404, and I have to say that I'm, I'm going to switch <laughs> from Windsor Newton to the Raphael 8404, and I'm very pleased with it. It's uh, a brush that I, I'm, I'm going to stick with. So this is the end of the video. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me. Please rate and subscribe, and I will see you again in the next video.